Welcome back to another episode of Daily Fortnite, your daily podcast about Fortnite. I'm your host, Mikey, aka Mike Daddy, aka Magnificent Mikey. And it as it is as we expected, you know, not any news uh, to bring you today. So we have some time for opinion. And the opinion we're talking about is our opinion on FNCS 2024. And my opinion is, it's not great. <laughs> it could have bu- it could have been done a lot better, right? I mean, I shouldn't have to think this much about who's qualifying, when they're qualifying, and what they need to do to qualify. I'm going to pull it up here on screen again. The, you know, I mean, they put out the graphic for us on a nice little format for us, right? So that you can visually see and it makes it not as hard when you, when you see the visual. But as, you know, a majority of fans are going to be watching they're not going to be sitting with a a format sheet in front of them saying what the format is exactly and even if they were they're still going to have to be doing math and looking up who has how many points at different points in the tournament to see where the team that they're following is going to be at again i'm just thinking as a viewer uh if you're a competitor that's one thing but if you're uh a viewer who's like a fan of a team you shouldn't be having to do like mental gymnastics to figure out if the team you're following uh is qualifying or if they are qualifying what portion of the bracket are they qualifying into you know i mean we're talking about <laughs> you know you got uh rounds one two three and four uh and then you're having uh different numbers of the top uh people get into the next round uh and then you're having the top 50 teams uh they're gonna go to the upper semifinals right upper semifinal why are you breaking up the semifinals into different brackets as well you know you got the top 50 going into the upper semifinals And then you have number 51 through 250 going to the lower semifinals. So now I have so many more rounds and brackets that I need to follow to figure out which bracket my team, you know, the team I'm trying that I'm rooting for the most for, uh, you know, trying to follow and figure out where they are. And then if I'm, you know, if they're in the semifinals, uh, you know, that's one thing. But then if you're in the lower semifinals, then I feel like you're then you're doing even more, uh, you know, math in your head to try to figure out, OK, what does my team need to do to get uh, to the next round and then make it to grand finals? Um, you know, and then after grand finals, then you're 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 looking at, uh, you know, seeing uh finally seeing who, who's going to win the whole thing but th- that's just a little bit too much work for me to try to figure out where the team i'm following is where, where they're at and where they're going to end up you know i shouldn't be going from open qualifiers to all these uh random rounds and then trying to figure out okay where they were the top you know 2000 or 1000 or 250 depending on which round it is and then from that point uh you know figuring out okay well did they make it into the semifinals or lower semifinals and if they made it into the lower semifinals what does that mean and how many matches are they playing and how many points are they going to need uh it's too much uh i don't really like the way they're going about it um just format wise this year um and then to be honest with you just duos in general i mean i think uh you know i'm just not 
deeply following the competitive community anymore uh but just just based on my knowledge of what's been there in the past i think that's what they want um you know as again as competitors uh they feel like you know you get more consistency and uh because you have a partner there's less you know uh randomized things that can happen to you because you have a partner there with you uh and again as a viewer just as a fan that's not what i'm looking for okay i i mean duos is fun they're all fun duos is fun trios is fun squads is fun but i think if i'm watching if i'm going to watch fortnite competitive and then you're talking about okay this is the biggest prize of the year this is our biggest tournament of the year to me as a viewer as a fan i do want to see solo i think that's what i prefer uh just knowing that like hey this would be the biggest prize because again to me always the fun thing was again when i was a kid you couldn't do this right you couldn't have uh live matches online a hundred different people competing all in the same lobby all at the same time so just the allure to me as a fan is the fact that yes there's 100 individual competitors all going against each other competing to be the last one standing not the last team standing the last one standing so um it's another year of duos i think that's the norm um and it could be the norm going forward but I, I would really prefer uh, solos at this point just because I, again, as a fan of Fortnite and w fan of watching Fortnite, I like to watch the chaos, uh, you know, that can happen in a match. So there's that portion of it, just the format itself, uh, not my favorite. Um, the... The duos part of it, not my favorite. Uh, and then I heard them talking about it on the Fortnite uh, podcast uh, this week uh, that the broadcast, right? They So they show where this is going to be streaming, but they don't really uh, give you other much other information, right? But um, if you go listen to um, Monster D-Face and... Um, the rest of his crew over there you're uh you'll you'll have heard that like yeah these aren't uh live lobbies either so they're the the broadcasters are going to just be randomly be shown you know whatever match that they're jumping into at the time so that's going to be really hard on them and i think broadcasting is such a big deal to the presentation of the competition of we'll say the of the sport right this is an esport so that's a big deal to the competition of any sport uh is the storytelling that the broadcasting is doing you know i'm i'm a big fan of wrestling and of course that is huge the storytelling that happens by the commentators on the commentating team is huge uh and add so much to the enjoyment uh, of the presentation. Uh, but, you know, in that, they have to know what they're talking about. Uh, and and they, they can see what's right in front of them. They know, they know what's coming. And if that's going to be the case in FNCS this year for the broadcast, where the broadcasters uh, are just going to be thrown into random matches at uh random times then they're not gonna have that background knowledge of what to say about the players or even what to say about the situation they're gonna react to what's happening on the screen in the moment but they're not gonna see okay what's the setup for this so like how did we get to this point so uh that's a little bit disappointing just everything uh about the presentation of fncs this year is a little bit disappointing to me i mean I'm still going to watch some of it here and there, but it's just too bad that, uh, you know, it, it's not right now, not, 
up to where I think it needs to be to get more people on board and to continue to grow uh, the sport. Uh, yeah, I, I, I guess that I and that's my uh, opinion on it in general. I just don't think they're doing enough with what uh, FNCS is this year to to grow the sport. It doesn't seem like I just don't see the. Um, of course, there's the opportunity anytime they're doing a tournament and you're giving big prize money like that. There's an opportunity to grow the game uh, and, and get more eyes on it, but. Um, I think they're missing out on a lot of easy opportunities just by simply, even if they kept duos, just by simply having an easier to follow format and having, uh, you know, a better, uh, presentation of, uh, of the broadcast, uh, for the broadcasters to commentate on. So that's my opinion. And again, um, I would love to hear you guys' feedback. What do you think of FNCS 2024? Are you excited about it? Are you going to watch? Um, you know, I want to know, do you think this is the best format that they could have possibly done? Um, do you, So do you like it or do you not like it? And if you made changes to the format, how would you do it? I mean, for me uh it's a little bit nonsense <laughs> you know right now it's a just too too many things going on open qualifiers round one two three four um you know breaking up those people into uh upper semifinals and lower semifinals it's 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 too much to follow i mean to me you're going to have 50 teams in total uh you know you could have just had uh three you know majors or whatever you want to call them call them the the three major, or i guess have the open qualifiers first uh then go into your uh majors to uh qualify uh you know let's say uh a hundred teams total and then you have those 100 teams compete uh, in the semifinals to get to our final 50 teams in the grand finals. And then those teams, uh, you know, are competing to be first place. But the way they have it set up right now, it's, it's a little bit, it's too much. Uh, I mean, I guess it kind of sets it up for a longer season uh that makes it feel like an actual season the way they have it set up um but again you could do it the way that i'm suggesting and, and uh still have that you know ha have that done over a period of time rather than uh this weird format that they have you know you could you could easily you could have easily done it as well if you want to make it last longer i mean break it up into uh five rounds right have your open qualifiers break it up into five rounds and then you know uh have 20 teams from each round qualify so that there would be 100 teams total again uh in that first uh qualifier and then again then you're having 100 teams compete in the semifinals to cut that lobby in half down to your final 50 teams that go that they all go on to the finals to compete for the championship um again so many different ways that they could have made it easier to follow and you now have there be less math to do you know uh for a viewer but you know that's what they came up with and we'll see how it goes i mean i hope that they get a lot of viewers i hope that you know all the people who uh are taking time to practice this game and good get, get good at this game are gonna have uh you know tens of thousands of people watching on 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 the streams or hopefully 
you know, in the hundred thousands of people watching across however many streams there's going to be. Uh, and I hope it continues to grow and I hope it helps them all grow their own personal brands uh, so that they can continue to, uh, you know, support themselves to continue to compete and get better over time and, and get, grow the sport. But um, I just don't know if uh, Epic came up with the best format for that this year. We'll see. I hope I'm wrong, uh, and uh, I hope that we hear about like some like huge number growths, uh, you know, no, number growths across um, viewership um, this year for FNCS. All right, there you go. That's my opinion on it, though. Uh, no other news, so let's go ahead. We we'll can quickly look at what people are playing. Battle Royale has 386,000. Uh, Lego Fortnite 71,000. Rocket raking, rocket racing. 14,000 festival main stage 26,000 zero build 293,000 ranked battle royale 226,000 we'll just do the main ones today so uh there you go there's a whole lot more to be discovered in the discover tab let's head on over to quests i believe we covered everything on the list for now indeed we did so uh just make sure you're going through uh you know doing those dailies on the daily and then uh you know hitting any other uh, bonus things that uh you might have all right let's head on over to the item shop and see what's in the item shop today looks like you know the cars are still here of course our marvel items uh our music items the weekend the jam tracks um terminator bundle still here my hero academia item still here we got a new outfit the summit seeker eevee outfit uh, of course it has a lego style come on there it is and the cross rider back bling comes with it as well um so she's uh, a snowboarder like the snowboarding goggle she's got on she's got on uh you know for a snowboarder i, I don't know why she's you know she's gonna be cold out there she's got some furry boots on but she's got on the snow pants but there's rips in them she's wearing like a halter top she just got a poofy jacket on but she's got to let it she's letting it slope down her shoulders and whatnot she's gonna be cold out there she's got the snowboard for the back bling um obviously gonna need that i do like that the um where the, he would put the boots instead of the boots there being there it looks like it's a couple of deagles uh that's uh or a couple of hand cannons that's uh that's fun all right so that's 1200 the icy piece axes pickaxe is 500 and it's just like color scheme that fits with um the new outfit uh, and then the Red Knight outfit uh, is 2,000. The Recon Expert outfit is 1,200. The Crystal outfit is 800. The Potassius Peels outfit is 1,200. Uh, we have the Bright Gunner outfit today for 1,500. Rainbow Smash um, pickaxe for 1,500. Match Point outfit for 800. The Maven outfit for 1,200. The Ruckus outfit for 1,200. Ooh, the Jawbreaker outfit for 1,200. Chaos Scythe pickaxe for 800. Ultra Scythe pickaxe for 500. The Flatfoot outfit for 1,200. The Terra outfit for 1,200. see here some other stuff that was in here yesterday like the cult team leader is still here we got the ravage outfit for 2000 scarlet commander outfit for 800 adventure peely outfit for 1200 crisscross emote for 500 the dragon emote for 800 and that looks like everything today you can get any and all of these items using code mikey m m m i k i e in the item shop and some of the proceeds will go to help support the show for our item of the day we will go with that new outfit 
the Summit Seeker EV outfit. I do like the way that one looks. Uh, you know, I like the white, the, the ice blue, the red. Uh, it all looks good together. Um, the back bling is cool. Like I said, I, I like the way they did that uh, with the hand cannons there. Just, just cool stuff uh, overall on that one. So there's your item of the day. All right. Um, we need to pull up today's leaderboard and see our leaders today. On the leaderboard today, Yo Rocco is the winner of Victory Royales with four. Eliminations was won by Guido Lose with 66. Evo the Party Hog and Guido Lose tied with 44 assists each. And Damage Dealt was won by Guido Lose with 2,500. Apocalypse Now, one fish caught with two. And Driving Distance was won by Yo Rocco with 746,600 meters traveled. All right, good job, everybody. Um, like I said, I want to see those numbers up. It's the weekend, baby. Come on, let's get those numbers up. I want to see, uh, you know, I want to see close to triple digits in those eliminations. All right. Uh, if you're hearing this right now and you still have time before the leader next leaderboard comes out, and again that uh, it resets at four p four fifteen uh, p.m. Uh, Pacific time every day. And it posts at like 4 o'clock uh, Pacific time uh, p.m. every day. So you have, you know, I, I, I think because I think it updates like in 15 minute increments. So you basically have until like 345 um, p.m. Pacific time to get as many eliminations and wins uh, and everything else that you can uh, to, to see what you end up with on that leaderboard so um you know if you're hearing this and you still have time hit it and hit it hard because i i want to i want to see you know now that now that we've recently seen uh triple digit numbers a couple of times i want to see that more often all right all right uh head out there and go do it and for now that's going to be the episode for today so make sure you go join the daily fortnite discord and hang out with us follow me over on twitch twitter and youtube head over to apple Podcasts. leave a five star rating and a written review for a shout out on the show make sure you subscribe so you don't miss an episode and until next time have fun be safe and don't get lost in the storm <laughs>